What's up, BYU Radio friends? Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan here on the latest BYU Sports Nation. It's a Jimmer special. Joined by Jimmer Fredette to discuss the current state of BYU basketball. Are they ready for the Big 12? And his path to the 2024 Paris Olympics. On the next episode, how deep is perhaps too deep for the BYU roster? Lots of options. And what lineups could we see in the next couple of days? Listen on demand, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, or tune in live at noon Eastern for BYUSN here on BYU Radio, baby. Next on BYUSN, BYU men's basketball picks up win number nine on the season thanks to special performances from Jackson Robinson, Noah Waterman, and Spencer Johnson. But was the bounce back win good enough? Plus, the GOAT, Jimmer Fredette, will break down BYU's win, what's impressing the most about this year's team, and preparing to chase gold in Paris in 2024. How a court ruling suddenly enabled two-time transfers to play in the next two weeks. How soon do we expect to see Marcus Adams Jr.? And with notable players declaring for the NFL draft and returning to BYU from the portal, we'll break down what it all means for Cougar football. Winning vibes on a winning Thursday. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is December 14th. I am Spencer Linton. He is a man who has received an assist from Jerem Jordan. Or from, from Jimmer for that, Jerem Jordan. One time in Glens Falls, we were doing a shoot. Jimmer had just worked out at Glens Falls High School. And I said, hey, can you just pass me the ball in a couple threes here? I missed the first, but I made the second. So it's, I think it's me and Jackson Emery. Those are the only two <laughs> that received an assist from Jimmer for that. I'm just kidding. I think he's top 10 in assist in BYU history. So he passed the ball. Absolutely. An underrated aspect of his game. Yeah. And we bring up Jimmer for a good reason because – it's a, it's, gym, it's a Jimmer show It's a Jimmer show. Uh, we're going to have Jimmer on for two segments today. He was on uh, the pre-halftime post, in-game with you as well. He's everywhere, man. He's in town. At, so if you go to ESPN, they, t- they, they car wash you, they say. You're going to go on all these shows and everything. We're car washing Jimmer, baby. He is on BYU <laughs> Sports Station today. We're going to have some fun. Good to have him in town. Squeaky clean fun, if you will. This is BYU TV. It always is. All rise and shout. Let's get to a loaded edition of What's Trending. Jackson Robinson pulls, fires, and scores. Three. Got it! Around and down. And lays it up and in. Win number nine in ten games for BYU basketball. The 18th-ranked Cougars take care of Denver 90-74, to and that leads off an array of topics in trending. We're going fast. We're going hard. We're channeling our Robert and I here. In trending You're today. a turkey, Taryn. <laughs> One of the classic lines from Coach and I. What? We will begin with BYU men's basketball. Jerem, again, the 16-point win last night against the Pioneers. Coming off a loss for the first time this season against Utah. They're 9-1. and one. Was the performance good enough to say that the Cougars are back on track and that it was indeed a bounce back? First off, Brigham Young taking down the Pioneers. That's just fun, right? Uh, let's just acknowledge that. A 16-point win was enough. It was not enough to cover in Vegas, but it was enough. Certainly, there's stuff BYU could have done better. Gave up 49 in the second half, allowed 11 offensive boards. Me, 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 me. All good. They scored all good, 90 dog. points and won by 16. It's all good. It's plus 14 in the boards. You, you know, you're under your, your turnover number of you want 12 or fewer. Jackson Robinson, unbelievable. This guy is playing great basketball right now. Career-high 28 points. Hits eight threes, which is tied for fifth most. We'll talk to Jimmer about that. In the postgame, he said, I was actively rooting against Jackson to pass me. He, he was <laughs> kidding. But 16 threes is tied for the most attempted uh, in BYU history. The last five games, Jackson Robinson is shooting 52%, 50 from three, and averaging 22 points a game with two free throws total. The dude's averaging 22 a game without free throws, and he is coming off the bench. Yeah, bench player. He is coming off the bench. More perhaps tomorrow about whether BYU should okay. consider starting him. Noah Waterman, dude. Amazing best, game. Best game as a collegiate player. He'd never had a double-double, and then he goes 20-14 and 14 on that. He had a double-double in the first half. It's wild. Spencer Johnson, another double-double. Spencer Johnson's playing great ball, too. He's an 11, uh, 6, and, and 4.7 guy. And it's coming out of a sickness. Most people don't know that. There you go. He's not shooting the three great, but it doesn't matter, honestly. Um, th- this team is good. 22 assists, 7 times 20-plus assists. All these things are great. You could have totally, BYU totally could have mailed it in here and this been a close game against a sneaky Denver team that has uh, one of the best scores in the country. They really limited Tommy Bruner, especially in the first half. He was third in the country at 24 a game. I liked everything I saw. There were, sure, there's stuff BYU could do better. 
But coming off of Utah, it's like, you get a 16-point win at home? Let's go. Yes, I love the argument. But Spencer, they, they should have won by at least 20. Stop it. Four BYU was difference. up. Who cares? BYU was up 27 points with 340 to play. And then they call off the, the bench players come in. Yes. And you essentially slow things down. Sure, it would have been great to cover in Vegas again and win by 26. Whatever. It didn't happen. 90 points was enough. A 16-point resounding points win will always be is enough. enough. Spence. Like, people need to calm down here. Well, they look, they look sloppy Denver. at times. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there are going to be sloppy junctures of the game. But overall, BYU played really well. Jackson BYU's, Robinson was on a heater, and so was Noah Waterman. It's because BYU is number three in net. Like, yes. you expect like, BYU to perform. Crazy how now. fast the expectations shift here. Just rewind like three weeks ago. Okay? <laughs> Let's go, yeah, to the first go game. Thanksgiving and just, yeah. Oh, whoa. my goodness. You know what? We looked at some numbers yesterday from BYU's first eight games versus what they did against Utah to kind of talk about just how stark the differences mm-hmm. were. Well, let's examine some of those same numbers, shall we, to look and see if, indeed, statistically, BYU did bounce back. Well, they're averaging over 90 points a game. Uh, they had 69 score to get Utah. Well, they hit that 90 juncture again, so check there. Yep. BYU's three-point field goal percentage was a little under their season average, yeah. 32.4, but they still made a ton. They made hold- five more. They hold the opponent to 22% from the three-point line, which is right on par with what they've been doing. That continues to be an amazing Incredible. Number, and Ken Pomeroy, again, said, you can't sustain that. Well, BYU sustained uh, it 10 I games will, in. Please make it manifest. I sustain it. All Assi- those in favor. The assist-to-turnover ratio, BYU really did a good job with this in the second half. It wasn't a great number at halftime, but they got better sharing the ball in the second half. So yes. 22 assists. They didn't turn the ball over as much. And then they made a bunch of free throws. So, yes, statistically speaking, in those five specific categories where BYU, quote-unquote, struggled against Utah, they did have the bounce back by the definition. Yeah, in, in Utah, road game, Utah, these things are different than home and Denver, for sure. The three-point defense, by the way. There's so number crazy. one in the country, 23.4%. It won't be sustained, but but – BYU is showing us through 10 games. Like, we have, we have a third of the season of data now. That's something. Like, you can't just ignore that. We say, eh, who have they played? Eh, they played San Diego State, Utah, Arizona State. And NC State. State and Evansville is top 120 as well. So, eh, interesting. Okay, topic two. Yesterday, a federal judge ruled in favor of a temporary restraining order against the NCAA's transfer rule, meaning the NCAA can't enforce its transfer waiver rules for two-time transfers. Take that, NCAA. Or, yeah, that's a win for all of us. For 13 more days, this is wild. BYU's Marcus Adams Jr. was at Kansas and, and Gonzaga this offseason, now BYU. He applied for a waiver after two transfers. So this me and hasn't heard back. This means technically Adams could play in the next 13 days. There's a couple of games available there. Yes. Mark Pope had this to say to you after the game about this situation. I mean, come on, how fast does the world change? So um, we kind of were trying to get on the phone with the NCAA all night long to make sure, you know, at BYU we always make sure. And um, so, you know, we should get some final word on that here pretty soon. But, um, but. You know, it's um, we change and we change fast, and so let's go. Okay, Georgia State on Saturday. Mm-hmm. How soon do you expect him to play? I expect to see him against Georgia State. Let's go. BYU needs to take advantage of this window so he can play against Georgia State and Bellarmine, but then Wyoming is outside He's of outside the there. 14-day window that there, was granted. There will be a, another hearing, and then there could be another ruling. Yeah. So it's at least – this window, right? A 14 day start. Yes. And the NCAA cannot go back and say, uh, oh, no, no, like all of you teams that thought you were going to take advantage of this and then did it, now you're in trouble. The, the judge said, you cannot do that. Because there's a bylaw, there's a rule written into the bylaws there. The NCAA's got it. It's there a, will be no it's a retroactive thick book, penalty. Bro. Yes. No retroactive penalty. Shout out to compliance who has to actually read all that. I had a few people ask me, well, is Marcus <laughs> Adams healthy? I know he was a little nicked up and is he in shape? I can tell you from what I've heard and a little bit I've seen, Mark Adams is ready to go. Like, he's above the he's rim. He's been waiting for the moment <laughs> he could play. Like, if he got a waiver back, let's go. He's fought. He, if, if BYU decides to play him, he can play Jim. He is ready, and I expect to see exciting. him against Georgia State. Tomorrow, let's talk more about, like, how many guys in a rotation can you have? Because right now, BYU's running nine deep without Foose. With Foose, it was ten deep. Mm-hmm. You want Dawson Baker in soon, perhaps Saturday. Um, you want Marcus Adams Jr. if you can have – like, how many guys can you play reasonably 
and still have a flow and whatnot. Let's talk to Jimmer about that too, having, having played on all kinds of teams. Like, what actually works in that situation? But, hey, if he can play Saturday, that's great. The next two games, these are two great games to kind of get him into the flow. Yes. That way, if you do get the opportunity to play him in Big 12 play, that he isn't thrown in there against the highest competition initially as his first collegiate game. Yes, give him a runway. Yeah. Give him a runway. Yeah, absolutely. And, frankly, give Dawson Baker a runway, and I think we're going to yeah. see him as well. That's against exciting. Georgia State. And again, the rotation, can it get too big? Is that a problem? Is it all value added? Like, I have some questions. The, the key is just to have everybody available and then let the coaches decide. So get Foose ready, get Dawson ready, Marcus ready, and then we'll see what like happens. Who going doesn't into the play? I, I would think that, uh, unfortunately, a guy like Trey Stewart might yeah. be the odd man out in that situation with Dawson Baker. But then who's the next guy, dude? Like, a Tiki? Maybe you go Foose smaller lineup. Back? You go smaller lineup. You have but Marcus then Adams what, play. What wing? Isn't playing <laughs> like you cannot take Richie Saunders off the no. court. No, you cannot take anybody. His the Rich, wings Richie's are, offensive rating is off the charts. Yeah, good. he's the number one uh, offensive uh, player according to Ken Palm. You uh, got the whiz kid Ali Khalifa who's just dropping dimes left and right. Like who are you can take off the floor? This Nobody. Is... <laughs> Richie Saunders is number sixty nine. Yeah, uh, no Waterman thirty eight. So no is your best Amazing. offensive rated player. Both those but guys. Richie's second. Are so so good for BYU. All right, basketball out for the moment, and let's throw in some football because yesterday BYU offensive tackle Kingsley Suamataia, not a surprise here, and tight end Isaac Rex both declared for the NFL draft. Isaac did have one more year of eligibility. He's getting older. His is certainly understandable. And Kingsley's been getting – Kingsley had two if he wanted. Late to first round, early to second round. Richard draft sophomore, consideration. Three yes. Out of high Kingsley will forego two years of eligibility. So how are you feeling about these guys and their prospects in the NFL draft now that they have declared? They didn't say it, Michael Scott. They declared yes. it. Uh, second round average for Kingsley Suamataia, according to – uh, NFL mock draft database that yep. gathers all the mocks, whether oh, yeah. those mocks are by your cousin's uh, mom's dad's uncle or some pro. It's so many. It's a lot. 49% of the mocks have him in the first round. So he he's probably a day two guy. We'll see. Um, so, But Kingsley will be drafted, becoming the third straight starting left tackle from BYU to be drafted. Wild. That is amazing. Brady Christensen. Amazing. And then Blake Freeland yes. and now Kingsley Suamataia. As for Isaac, undrafted free agent is probably where he ends up. Hopefully he kills it in the combine stuff. Obviously high character and whatnot. Hopefully he sneaks into like the sixth or seventh round. But he'll get an NFL opportunity. We'll see what that looks like. Yes, he has NFL hands. He He has great hands. The challenge for him will be what he's faced over the last two plus years, and that is to truly get healthy. I don't think we have seen like a fully healthy version of Isaac Rex since he sustained that awful injury against USC. That jacked him up way more than we anticipated. He played through the pain last year, to his credit. He was the main guy this year. In the end, on the field, I'm not talking off the field, Spence, on the field, losing Dallin Holker hurt. Dallin Holker was awesome. Uh, Mackie was finalist. Yeah, he was incredible. That tandem would have been fun, but that's uh, whatever. Uh, BYU now has to fill that void with Isaac Rex, who in the end becomes the all-time TD leader among tight ends in BYU history. Would you look at that list of tight ends, and that is quite the accomplishment. So Isaac Rex leaves as one of the more decorated tight ends in BYU history. Yes, more touchdown catches than Clay Brown, Johnny Harleen, Dennis Pitta. Gordon Hudson. And Gordon who, To Hudson. me, Gordon Hudson is the greatest tight end sure, that's walked for through sure. here. Dennis was pretty good, I admit it. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> Isaac was uh, pretty good, too. Wow. Yeah, I'm with you. I think he's an undrafted free agent. Someone's going to give yeah. him a legitimate shot. You on can't, the Matt, you can't on the Matt Bushman 24 string. touchdown catches. Yeah. Matt Bushman has carved out a nice yeah. NFL career on practice squads and whatnot. Isaac uh, could do the same. Okay, last but not least. I got, I got a wish here, Jerem. I got one of my Christmas wishes. Is that what, did you say that on the show? Yes. Nice. Uh, finally, uh, BYU running back Miles Davis. Yes, uh, Miles! Who can play the trumpet better than anybody I know. Uh, reportedly pulled his name out of the portal yesterday. How does this impact the running back room? I'm so glad that he is back at BYU. The moment. I mean, when he left, I was like, no, 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 no. Because if Aiden Robbins declares for the draft and we had, you know, strong suspicion that he would – and I was looking at that running back room and thinking, okay, so you've got L.J. Martin, and then we hope Hinkley Rapati is okay after a pretty devastating knee injury. Yeah. And then what else? Because now you probably lose Aiden, which BYU did, and Miles Davis in the portal. This was not good news. Among so proven guys. I just said, you know, 
with a guy that's been in Aaron Rodgers' offense for so long to lose that, that guy that understands. I mean, he knows the system. He knows what he's supposed to do. And he runs physical and he's fast. I don't think we've really seen what Miles Davis can do in a full capacity because he hasn't been used consistently. He had that yeah. breakout game against Wyoming. and then He was awesome against Wyoming. He had the huge run right here. Good timing. I mean, not, not much more, but I think he's capable of more. And so I'm so glad he's back because this is an immediate boost to BYU's running back room depth, and they need it. They, they need to go find somebody else in the portal. Totally. Without Miles Davis, they need to find two people in the portal. So this solves at least one of the problems. Yeah, I'd love to see Miles uh, between the tackles a little more. We've kind of seen him wide uh, a lot, and he's got the speed on sweeps and uh, get, getting to the, to the boundary, right, and, and to the field. But um, let's, let's see what BYU can get. They need, uh, they need a guy that could be the leading rusher, if you will. Excited about L.J. Martin's future, obviously. He's special. Really strong start. He's special. To the beginning of the season. NFL-type talent, which is awesome. Uh, Nukuluve Helu is in the mix as well as a guy that was off a mission and kind of redshirted this last year. So yeah. let's see who he is. And then Enoch Nawahine is in the room as well. Those are your running backs walking into the season. Uh, Deion Smith is out. Uh, with graduation, uh, BYU TV employee, by the way. He's doing great work. Here. Love Dion. And then Aiden Robbins, obviously, was a, a big loss. You've got to find a big-time guy in the portal, a la Chris Brooks, a la uh, Aiden Robbins. Okay, as we wrap up this topic, and before we throw out our question of the day, I'll ask you this because you weren't on the show, and I'm interested to get your opinion. But the running back's room with Miles Davis returning, where is that on your priority list? Because for me, it's number three behind offensive line. Just frankly, on offense offensive- or the whole team? On the whole team. Offensive and defensive line are kind of like tied for number one for me. Then it's a quarterback, and then it's probably the running back. O-line, D-line is always going to be the priority for me because that's where football begins and ends uh, quite a bit. Um, If you can't do that, you can't do other stuff. Uh, Quarterback would like another guy to compete with Jake Retzloff there. Obviously, young Ryder Burton and and the other guys in the room, exciting. But I would like a somewhat proven guy at quarterback as well. But, yeah, so running back might be fourth for me. Okay. Yeah. It's right there with linebackers. Because you have L.J. Martin, you feel yes. somewhat comfortable. Like a tight end, it's like, okay, there's some talent there, but you, haven't, you don't have a guy that you know has done much. That doesn't mean they can't do it. Sure. You just feel more comfortable if hey. you kind of work, that. Work to do for you. BYU football in the portal, for yeah. sure. I, I'm hoping for more commits here a little sooner. I'm seeing them around the country. I'm like, where are the guys committing here from the well, portal? Signing day is in, let's see, five days. Six days. Six days. Yep, Six next, days from now. Wednesday. There you go. All right. I'm not talking signing yet. I'm talking portal day. Portal commitments. <laughs> Who then signed? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Our throwback Thursday question of the day, after a loaded trending edition, lots on. of topics, is a feel good here. Okay. What is your favorite? Because it's Jimmer Day. What is your favorite Jimmer for Debt memory at BYU specifically? Suzanne Roberts on Instagram says hitting a half court shot at the end of the first half against Utah at the Huntsman Center. Yeah, it was mean mugging on that one. Oh, here's the video. <laughs> this, this was just the ultimate, like, you can't stop me. <laughs> I was under the basket he, uh, that he made it under, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. Oh, and then Mark Durant gosh. was like, maybe the greatest half of basketball ever. I love superlatives. It was great. Mark Durant went Bill Walton mode right there. <laughs> Has there ever been a greater half of basketball, please? I love the handheld right here. It's like, okay, I'm going to get right in his face. <laughs> <laughs> on the mountain. So like 78 people saw that. Nate great. Kennedy on X. And I I love this moment too. The game against Arizona in Tucson where he cooked the Wildcats. He set a scoring record. 49 points, 9 threes. On the Wildcats on floor. I love Chase Fisher's 10 threes against Chaminade. Don't get me wrong. A nine here. But nine at Arizona. <laughs> this is the greatest shooting performance in BYU history. Yes. And he's a junior. And this... When Jimmer was a sophomore against Wake Forest, BYU almost won that game with, like, three pros on the other side for the Demon Deeks. That was the game where I was like, whoa, who is this guy? Um, Knowing that, you know, he had some nice moments as a freshman and kind of was one of the main guys coming out of freshman year. But but that at Arizona, it was like, no, wait a minute. As MJ said, the ceiling is the roof here. (laughs) Like, whoa. 49 at Arizona. Yeah, that was fun. Great stuff. Keep those uh, posts, not tweets, Posts eh. coming in. Eh. Hashtag BYUSN on X, Facebook, and Instagram. You call it trades. It's like the Nick Emery games that were vacated. I just ignore them. Can it, I yeah, don't. Can it still be a tweet if it's on X? I think we should do that. Yes. Send in your tweets on X. Just call it Twitter. <laughs> Whatever. BYU, number 18 in the country. Men's hoops. Taking on Georgia State. Panthers coming in on Saturday, 4 and 5. 
BYU looking to win another one. Free game at 8 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. You know, Jimmer is taking on several roles, competing for gold. He's also an analyst now for BYU TV, and he's in studio to break down hey. the bounce back victory against Denver last night. And if he was nervous at all about being passed by Jackson Robinson in that individual three point shooting performance category, this is BYU Sports Nation. It's close. Jimmer again! This is ridiculous! And Fournette shakes free again from where? Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's a Jimmer Thursday on BYU Sports Nation. This is my impersonation of that. <laughs> the, the no emotion, but... Every, everybody's feeling every emotion. So. Yes. <laughs> Scored 32 at Jersey's worth. Uh, welcome back to BYUSN. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. We are live in Studio B, and we now welcome in for the first of two segments today, the great Jimmer for Day. Long time no see, man. Long time no see. You Been, guys got me for two segments. Yes. 11 and a half yes. hours. My goodness. Working overtime. Working overtime. How do you feel about the versatility <laughs> of the set? Because last night you're doing the hey. pregame. But it's like a different place in it's, here. It's, it's unbelievable. I didn't realize it was only like a year old. Like I, it's, this is an incredible studio. Yeah, we I like feel it. like I could be in here a lot more often and enjoy it. So this is uh, watching the game last night on the big screen. That was fun. It's the way. It's great. It's we, great. Do, we don't really do that on this program. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to do that more. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, that, that was, uh, it was elite. Elite. So it's it was, it was been great. Okay. Speaking of last night, how would you sum up your first official experience as a college basketball analyst? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. It was, it was fun. Let's put it this way. I enjoyed it. Had a great time. Obviously, Jerem led the whole thing and we were kind of just uh, enjoying, uh, you know, speaking off of his questions. And uh, so I felt like it was pretty natural. I mean, I know the game of basketball and this team and uh, was doing a DU game. So it felt like it was perfect yeah. timing for me you living in Denver, Denver yep. for a little bit, you know, so had some tidbits. But I mean, it was it was a really fun experience. You know, I'm a hard crack. I'll give myself a C. I, there's a lot of things I can do better. There's a lot of things I can do better, but it was uh, it was great for your very, very first time doing this. As an analyst, you've done a gajillion yeah, interviews. Yeah, yeah. But like where you're the analyst, yeah. I thought it was really, really good. Well, thank you. I thought it was awesome. And it was super Appreciate fun. Appreciate it. Because sitting next to you and Ty, it's like, yeah. dude, we can't go wrong. Let's <laughs> yeah, just have exactly. some fun. Yeah, we just have fun. Yeah. Trying to make fun of some people. Yes. <laughs> make fun of myself. You know, have a good time. I know I, I watched the Mannings. We talked about the Mannings yeah. and how good they are at doing the in-game stuff and just playing off each other and being self-deprecating, but also just being funny, enjoying it. That's what people like. Yes. So I try to try to do the same and just have a good time with it. I do have an issue with you guys, though. Um, <laughs> you didn't tell me about Blue Pants. Yep, yep, yep. And you didn't tell me about Gray Suit either Listen, last hey, night. Come we, on! We didn't have to tell each other. No. <laughs> you know, we, we just, just knew. Absolutely just did it we on our own. Know. Obviously, we're not on the same wavelength, Jeremy. Like, uh, we, it, I thought we got, were because we go back to 07. But. We do, we do, but it uh, looks like it. we lost it. <laughs> we lost, lost it. Lost, <laughs> lost it in 16 or something, yeah. 2016 maybe. I don't know, somewhere in something, that area. Something yeah. That's hilarious. And if the night goes, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah once the... I went to Europe, it was over. Full clarity. because I went skinny jeans and it was over. I know the question's going to come from our good friend John, by the way. He's like, oh. okay, you had the same gray suits on last night. Now you got the blue pants yeah, on. John's yep. texting What's us the all deal? the time. About did you, did you plan this? This was absolutely 100% unequivocally not planned. Well, that makes this, me this, feel better, though. The gray suit planned. and the blue pants, no, not planned. It was, it was not planned, but we might start planning yes. now just to, just to have <laughs> just fun. To mess just to have fun yeah, with it's, you. It's, yeah, exactly. It's fine. <laughs> Coming back to the Marriott Center is one thing. Coming back in a suit and being an analyst yeah. is different. How was last night versus your other? visits different right so usually you're getting there I mean I, I come to a game usually once a year now with my kids um, so I come back and you know Brian Santiago has got the whole treatment we're sitting there with the iPads the kids don't even watch the game they just are <laughs> locked in on, on the games and you know we get the ice cream we get the cougar tails we have uh, we have a great time you feel the atmosphere in the building obviously get the cheers and it's it's just a great experience and this was a little bit different right you come here for for for, for some work you know and you got to prepare I was on the plane over here you had notes yeah, I was, uh, writing yeah. Yeah. notes and uh, looking at the Denver tape watching uh, them against Idaho and against Colorado State and watching these games you put in the work but I like it right like I like watching basketball it's fun for me to do I like analyzing players see what they do um, how are they you know what's their defensive scheme against these players and you know how does the score where do they get their shots all these different things I enjoy uh, that because then I can use it in my game if I'm playing or if I'm teaching or coaching someone I can help you know hey so this guy does this so it's it's fun for me it's natural and yeah I can see myself doing it lot more all right we always talk about the eye test now you've watched BYU several times this season yeah. and obviously very specifically last night so yeah. 
As you observe this specific BYU team, what impresses you the most about the Cougars after a 9-1 and start? Um, the fact that they can spread the wealth so well. I mean, it's incredible that they're averaging over 20 assists, 20 assists per game. Like, that does not happen often in a, for a college team. For sure. So being able to pass that ball. So first it tells me that they like each other. Uh, they're unselfish. They do not care who's scoring the basketball. That's always really good, right? The second thing is that they're knocking shots down. They they have four or five guys that are knockdown shooters, right? They're getting the balls in the right places. And now, and and coach has gone to a, f- a spread five off a five out offense to get these guys space so that when they're getting into the lane, someone's helping. They're kicking it. They're usually making that shot or it's an extra pass. Ali's been huge, being able to pass the ball and make a threat when you're going back door. If you don't have a threat. To to actually get the ball, then you can hung up on the guy, and, and that offense doesn't work as well. So being have being able to have that passer at the top, kind of like a, a Jokic light, I like to call him, uh, being able to go out and do that is something that is really important for that offense. So I've been very, very impressed. It'll be interesting once they get into Big 12 play when they get down to really close games, which one of those guys is going to take over? Because you're going to need a guy that's going to be like, I can, I'm going to get a bucket for you right now, and I don't need anybody's help. And that's what I'm going to look for as mm. they move forward. Is it Dallin Hall? Is it Dawson Baker? Is it Jackson Jackson Robinson? Jackson Robinson, who's playing so well. We're talking about last five, 22 a game, 50% from three. Off the bench. At what what point, and we discussed this in the postgame, but at what point does BYU need to consider, if at all, starting him? Yeah, I mean, his production is so good. Um, You know, I think at this point, like we talked about, you let it flow as of right now because things are working. Uh, He's comfortable coming off the bench. He knows exactly what he needs to do when he comes off the bench. He's there to score, right? So he's as soon as he gets an open look, he is shooting the ball. And sometimes as a starter, you ease into it a little bit. You see how the defense is playing you, right? You're like, all right, now they're switching. Oh, they know they're going over ball screens. So I take that first couple possessions to see what it is. He's watching that from the bench and like, all right, this is where I'm going to get my shots off. This is how I'm going to get my shots off. As soon as I have an open look, I'm shooting it. So he feels like somebody I know. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I mean, that's just, <laughs> absolutely. I love that about him. So, uh, <laughs> so I will, so I love that. Um, but at a point in time, there may be a game where, you know, game or two where things slide, whatever happens during the big 12, it's just, it's the, it's the big 12. You're going to have some games that are difficult. It'll be interesting at that point to see, all right, now I need to switch up this starting lineup. Let's put in some more firepower. Let's get someone else off of the bench that can still bring in some firepower. So it'll be interesting to see, but right now things are good. So let's keep it. As good as Jackson was last night, he only made eight threes. Yeah, only. Good. And what, didn't quite hit on. your nine or Chase Fisher's <laughs> ten, so you're, yeah. you're safe for now. I'm safe for now. I mean, <laughs> with how many shoot threes that these guys shoot, we know that these are these numbers are going down eventually. That's just the way it works, right? So I'm happy where I'm at. I'm already, I mean, I'm already number two, so at this point, what's the difference? <laughs> if I go, what's the difference if I go to three, four, five? You, you know, five and, years yeah, of greatness. I mean, you can barely watch the Arizona tape. It's like grainy. You know what I mean? I, I just, it'll be lost ever. Uh, yeah, where's the ball? Yeah, yeah I, wait a I didn't even have the channel. I didn't watch that game live. Yeah. I was watching Lord of the Rings, and I was like, Jim yeah. Red 49? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. yeah, Lord of the Rings, I love it. <laughs> it was awesome, man. <laughs> at, at what point is the rotation perhaps too big? Because yeah. Marcus Adams Jr. could play. Dawson Baker uh, is going to play soon. Foose is going to come back at some point. Yeah. You can't realistically play like 12 guys and have a flow, it feels yeah. like. No. Or maybe – you can. No, I don't think so. Uh, being on a lot of different teams, uh, you know, I, I related to the Clippers the last couple of years. They've had so much depth. They got 12 guys that can actually play, and it's like only eight of them really is what you want to do. Once you get into a Big 12 play, you're only really looking for an eight man rotation. The ninth and 10th guy may come in to, to sub for a few minutes, right? But that's basically it. Foul trouble situation. Exactly. Like you know, a little bit of a blow, whatever it is, but you want to get it down to that eight man rotation. So coach is trying to figure that out. He's got three, to, you know, to four more games to be able to figure that out, especially with the new guys possibly coming in. It's a perfect time to be able to, all right, this is this three games. If I can get these guys acclimated, I can see them in an actual game situation. I can see them in practice for a couple of weeks. And then at that point, you know, you, you, you figure out your rotation and kind of go from there. Obviously, it'll change as you go, but you want to try to get it down to, to eight and have those guys play the majority of the minutes. I, I couldn't tell you who's not going to play much. Maybe. Yeah. At this point. I mean, Trey, like, and this, like you said, it's unfortunate. Trey's Trey, played well. He's playing way better than yeah. last year, but he's probably the odd man out if they had to do that today. And then I don't yeah. know who else. 
And he's so good defensively. I love Trey. Right? I mean, last night with Bruner, right, he came into the game and changed it immediately. Got a steal, tipped it off of his leg, created a turnover, you know. But, you know, he, he obviously someone's got to be the odd man now. We're not sure exactly who that could be. It may be Trey, uh, maybe someone else that we're not even thinking of. That coach is like, hey, we need we need some length today. We need some scoring, whatever yeah. it is. Um, so we'll, we'll see. But it's good to have options. You just need to make sure that – you're, you're communicating with the team. Hey, this is what I'm expecting, and bring the guys in and say, this is what I'm expecting out of you. Your minutes may come down, but stay ready because at some point you never know what's going to happen. You need to continue to yeah. stay ready and buy in. As far as expectations go with BYU as they build toward the Big 12 Conference, and this is a moving target for sure because BYU yeah. has been so good unexpectedly yeah. compared to what we thought they originally were going to be, yeah. and that's a credit to Mark Pope and his staff and yeah. the guys, and they were tired of hearing that everybody says they, you know, they're going to be terrible. Yep. Um, that era is over. Yeah, yes. and that, that has <laughs> been over. put to bed yeah. for sure. <laughs> but both Jeremy and I have kind of – we started out at six Big 12 wins. Now it's like maybe up to like eight, eight. or nine, yeah. you know. Yeah. So in your mind, what would be a good – Big 12 record in 18 games. Is it 8 and 10? Is it 9 and 9? Yeah, because it's I, so tough. Yeah, I think if, if you're around 500, I think that's very good for this first year, right? Because like, look at that schedule. I mean, the teams that you're playing, I, I mean, I talked about it last night. Your easiest game is going to be against West Virginia. <laughs> uh, you know, a team Are like you that. Me? So, at West Virginia, at what a – yeah. No, that's, that's easy, right? A like, super easy win. So Gosh. you see that schedule, and it's just the way that it kind of works, um, the Big 12. So if you're somewhere around – hovering around 500 – those teams make it into the tournament, right? Like, yes. especially with the Some non-conference probably. schedule that we've had going, if we did go in 12 and one, and then we did, uh, you know, a 500, we're in the tournament. It's not, Single not, not a question, two. not a question. So that's the luxury of being in a really good conference. But at the same time, you have to win half of your games and they're not easy. Gonna, they're not easy wins. You, you're going to be in close games a lot of the time. So we have to see, you know, BYU continue to play in these close games and win these close games, at least a few of them, right? And hopefully every once in a while you get a 10, 15-point win at the Marriott Center because it's rocking and the rock is going nuts and, yes. you know, we're having a good time. You'll have a few of those games, and then there'll be a few games where you're at rock chalk and uh, you get blown out. But you got to stay the course, right? Stay the course. That's what you're looking for. Get into that tournament. Under Mark Pope, you always 500 in single-digit games, by the way. Ooh. Yeah. They're way better when it's 10 plus. Okay. Yeah. They don't yeah. lose a ton by 10 plus. Yeah. They win way more. So that yeah. will be interesting. Yeah, for sure. Okay, more with Jim or Fredette coming up in a moment. BYU basketball with Mark Pope is tonight. Richie Saunders, the Colonel. No one's calling him that, but I am. Bucket cur- chicken night every time <laughs> the with Colonel. him. Colonel. 8 30 Eastern on the BYU TV app and ESPN Plus. <laughs> I proposed to him. I said, just have a, a bucket of chicken. Richie Saunders on the now I'm just thinking of that line from So I Married an Axe Murder about. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. <laughs> uh, as mentioned, segment number two with Jimmer approaching, and we turn the page to what he's doing right now, competing for gold in Paris, getting ready for that in the Summer Olympics. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The show in college basketball, and of course, the show is Jimmer Fredette. And not wasting any time, pulling the trigger. Jimmer. I think the only chance you have against him is to face guard him everywhere. Don't even worry about anybody else on the court. Oh, I love the commentary from the great Steve Lapis, especially the one against him. That we, was from deep. We ran into him in an elevator in Vegas, and we, were, yes. we had to be like, yes. that was from deep. Like, yes. We had to say it to him for some reason, like we were fanboy. It was funny. <laughs> I just wish Bill Walton could have done more Jimmer games, right? Oh, that would have been fun. Yes. Maybe uh, we need to connect that. Can he do the Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Welcome back to Studio B. Jimmer Fredette is with us for the second of two segments, and we now – turn our attention from BYU basketball and what they're doing to what Jimmer is doing in his professional career. So Jimmer, let's hop right into it. Your yeah. team just qualified in three on three basketball. It's a new sport in the summer Olympics. You have an opportunity. You, you were an automatic berth yep. based on a lot of hard work. Um, and now you're going to compete for, for gold. What has this journey been like for you the last, what, how, how long has it even been since? Yeah, it's, it's been, been about a year now. A year? Yeah, yeah, it's been about a year now. So I started, Last November, uh, my first tournament I ever played in was the America Cup. It was so just brutal. over a year. Yeah, just over a year ago. And uh, our good friend Fran Fraschilla was the guy that called me up and was like, hey, yes. uh, 
do you have any interest in playing three on three basketball? And I was like, well, yeah, I do, but well, let, me, let me learn more about it. And told me about it. He's like, it's an Olympic sport now. You know, we want to we want to qualify for the Olympics. We want you to be able to help us do that. As soon as I heard Olympics, I sent him in. Uh, you know, Whitney, my wife, was in. She's all about it, and uh, we knew it was in Paris. She's oh. like, you're gonna make the Olympics. We're all gonna go. It's gonna be an expensive trip for you. So uh, and I was like, <laughs> great, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm like, let's let's have a great time. So we were all in, and then from that point on, uh, this last six months, we've had a world tour season that helps you qualify towards the Olympics. So the number of tournaments you play and matter, and how you do in those tournaments matter. It's all accumulative points for Team USA. And fortunately, we become we were number two in the world. Uh, and at the deadline, so now we qualified for the Olympics. So Serbia was one, we were two, China was three, so now all three of us are in. Then there'll be five other teams that get in, and they all have to do these qualifying tournaments to try to get in. So those you don't want to be in those because those you never know what can happen in 3x3. So it's uh, it's been amazing. I've been all over the world, literally, um, and uh, such a unique experience. And my the guys that I play with have just been incredible. It's crazy. When did you where, get where, back? Yeah, where are you? Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia? Yeah. Chile, like. I was in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, we went to Abu Dhabi. Uh, we've been to Doha. Uh, we went to Mongolia, we went to Macau and Hong Kong, went to Cebu, Philippines, went to Santiago, Chile. <laughs> the we passports look Kosovo, dope. yeah, we went, to, we went literally all over Europe, all over the place. So, I mean, uh, yeah, it was really cool. You're only in those cities for a few days, right, because they're, they're two-day tournaments. Um, but some of them we were able to stay a little bit longer because we'd go from tournament to tournament in Europe. So we doing just all this crazy random stuff and, you know, going to the hot springs in Budapest and like <laughs> just doing, just being locals and having a good time. That's so awesome. We loved it. It was really fun. So was it hard to get used to three on three? Because it's very different from five on five. Yes, it definitely was. Um, you know, one of the biggest differences is that there's no help side in 3x3. It's really interesting. Like, you, they want you to stay on your guy because the two-point shot is so much more important than a layup that if you come and help down, they just kick it out, and then you're open for a two, and that's the best Ones shot. And twos, yeah, 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 it's a one versus a two yeah. game. So it's literally double the points, which for me is imp- incredible, right? Yeah. I love this that. This is great. Yeah, yeah, I'm just shooting twos all the time, right? So it's great, but, yeah, that's a difference. It's continuous play, so you get it out. As soon as you make a basket, you get it out of the basket. You throw it past the three-point line to kind to check it and then go you don't check the ball and stop it's continuous whether there's a make or a miss so it's it's very fast paced it can get very tiring because it's physical um so it's it's definitely an interesting sport and i absolutely love it it's been a great experience was it ever windy because it's outside yeah. like does that affect the shot <laughs> it, it can it can um especially so they have two different levels of, of tournament there's a master's level which is the highest then there's challengers which is the one below it it kind of gets you into master's tournaments so you got to play in both the masters are great because it's covered they have big stands around it so it breaks the wind mm. from it usually it's not super windy anyway but challengers um, but maybe Break, but the challengers you don't mm. so it's just like open yeah and every once in a while you'll have like a windy day and you're just like what do you, what do, you do so you're like trying to <laughs> aim a shoot foot it right a little bit to the right or it's like <laughs> all right i'm just going to the basket on this uh, you know what i mean like th- it's really interesting but in the olympics they'll have big stands they'll have the cover you won't feel the wind at all nice. it feels like an arena um and it's a great atmosphere it's fun they put it right in downtown cities so there's a lot of foot traffic around mm. the stands are always filled um so it, it makes it fun and the USA did not qualify in the last Olympics yep. in three on three. It is a big deal, one, to qualify. Yep. But two, you could get a, a, an Olympic medal, yeah. and it could be gold. But, well, I mean, that's exciting, man. It's extremely exciting. I mean, that would be that's the goal for everyone, right? So there's only eight teams that qualify. So it's an interesting format. So what they do is you play every team once. And at that point, you the bottom two are out of the tournament. The top two get a, a bye to the semifinals. Yeah. And then the other, other four play to get into the semifinal. So, so if you get to the final. semis, you you're need to win one match. game to medal. You're in the medal match. Yeah. Yep, you're in the medal rounds, wow. right? So it's uh, so that's great. So for us, we hope to have that format. We would love to be able to get into that top two and then be in the medal rounds right away. That would be the, the ideal situation. Um, but it's I think it plays into our, our hands for that format. We're going to be waking up whatever time. It doesn't matter. Night. No, we, watch. <laughs> we, 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 we will watch. I hope they're in the morning for you, but uh, you know, yeah, night usually, for us. Usually yeah. they're night. 
usually they're nighttime games because they well, want they don't want it to be too hot, gotcha. right? So they're trying to limit that. They always sure. have lights. So eight. we'll usually start around five and go. So it'll be like yeah. right eight about the time our eight show hour is airing, or say, maybe just after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just watch. Let's just watch Jimmer's. Absolutely, basketball. we'll just watch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just uh, we can't watch show. Yeah, just, <laughs> NBC or whatever. But we'll just watch. Uh, we'll yeah. get the rights. Come on. <laughs> we'll <get the> rights. <laughs> it's super simple. And junior, <laughs> get junior, on Ben, yeah. get on that. Come on. <laughs> Jimmer Fredette is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Tell us a little bit about the roster that you're going to go over there with. Obviously, BYU fans are very invested into you, but yeah. who's on your team? Yeah, well, we're not positive yet because they still they can pick from a pool of players to go play in the Olympics. So the team that I played on uh, the, the last six months, our four guys have been awesome. There's a guy named Kareem Maddox, uh, played at Princeton. He's my age, 6'9", athletic, really good player. Been playing 3x3 for probably eight years, the most, the wow. longest, longest mm. out of any of the guys. Uh, Canyon Berry, who is a Barry. Uh, Rick Berry's son. Yeah, nice. And uh, shoots the underhand free throws. Seriously? 100%. And he's <laughs> That's awesome. 90%. Oh, right? wow. Like, incredible free he's trying, like He's trying so hard. He's like, I just need one NBA, an NBA guy to switch. <laughs> and then I can, I can just make a living off of this. <laughs> he can't get the guy, but he's trying. <laughs> uh, great guy, 6'7", athletic, good player. And then another kid, Dylan Travis, D2, All-American, been playing 3x3 a while. A little taller than me, big, just a bulldog, just plays hard, can shoot, you know, does the little things. Um, so that's the team that we played. We hope it's our team that stays together, that goes to the Olympics. We believe that they'll hope, you know, that that's a possibility. Um, but they do have a pool of players that they could choose from. So we're not sure yet. They'll they'll announce the team later on. Um, so probably towards like April ish, April May. Um, so that they officially know who the team is. So for now, we're sticking together. We're just playing. We're, we're, we're you know, continue to work on our stuff um, and, you know, get ready for whatever happens. Is this the end of your basketball journey after this, or will you keep playing somewhere? Definitely not five on five. Um, that's something that's, you know, probably, you know, towards the, the end of the career after the COVID season in China kind of just ruined the taste in my mouth or going overseas. I have three little ones now and, uh, you know, being with them is the most important thing with three X three. Um, you know, it's, it's different, but I could pick and choose tournaments that I could go to and they would be, you know, three, four day commitments and then I could come home for a while. So we'll see as far as that's concerned. Um, so, I'm not 100% sure if I'll be fully, fully done, but I'll definitely be doing a lot more other things like this and um, my Tandem Ventures things that, I, that I've been doing uh, a lot more. So, Great stuff from Jimmer Fredette. Before you go, we got to bring in our Throwback Thursday question because <laughs> we want you to react to these okay, coming in from, from fans. But what's your let's favorite Jimmer Fredette memory at BYU specifically? <sighs> and Dave Hackett on X Answers. Man. When Jimmer scored 52 against New Mexico and only had a single free throw. Yep, that's amazing. <laughs> During the game in the 2011 Mountain West Conference Tournament. Is one that, free throw, Jimmer. Yeah, no, I mean, come on, refs. Look, one free throw. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't want to get fined. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not playing anymore, I guess, though. So, But, uh, no, it was, that was incredible. That was the one where you told Djokovic to move out of the way, correct? So that's, uh, that's, that's a always. Great story. That's, I knew that you wanted to watch, so I was like, I got to put on a show. right? I got to put on a show for you. That was. You felt, you, we were on the same wavelength again. Yeah. Yes, and that was you such knew. a fun time because we hadn't beat New Mexico that year. We were 0-2 versus yes. New Mexico. That was, that was the game only after two the losses. Brandon News. Yes, that was, that was the tough. only two losses yep. we had in conference, two of the three losses we had for the year. And I was so mad. And I was just like, all right, you know, I'm just going to shoot every time. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to go out and shoot. And uh, it ended up working. So <laughs> I, I went – so someone else went to the press conference, and I interviewed Noah Hartsock for True Blue. Yeah. And I said, what are you going to remember from tonight, Noah? And he said, the Jimmer Fredette and I combined for 59 points. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was such a great. That's great. That's such that was, a Noah answer. Noah which, which, by the under, way. Underrated player and funny. Yes. Super funny. You broke the single game and career record on the same play, by the way. Yeah. That, that was, was wild. That was cool. That was cool. I remember that. It was, it was the and one, one the where it kind of went in. And, yeah, the that was the one free throw. throw. Get the free throw. Yeah, that was yep. the one free throw yep. Yeah, at the end of the game. Yep. Then. Then coach took me out. I was mad. I was like, well, I could have gotten more points. Let me build on this. Give me 55. I'm Let's just go. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Jim, we're so great to have you in studio. Yeah. We look forward to working with you more. Yeah, absolutely. This put is, you in the end. Yeah, let's do some more. Yeah, man. absolutely. We will. This has been great. It's been super fun. You guys are awesome. Appreciate you guys letting me join join the party. Yes. But buy some blue pants. This concludes yeah. Blue Pants yeah. Thursday. Yes. I didn't know that was the thing. We're all going to make now. No, I didn't know that was the thing. Listen, I have white pants Friday. White pants Friday. I have white pants, but I 
I use them in the temple only. <laughs> <laughs> and now Blue Pants Thursday. No, yeah, okay, go. that's Blue good. Blue Pants Thursday. Good to see you, bro. No, guys, thanks. <laughs> Women's Hoops taking on Idaho State Saturday, 4 Eastern time. BYU 8-2 and two, playing good basketball. Kaylee Wilson shooting the three well. Let's go. Four Eastern, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus Saturday afternoon. Jerem, don't know if you've heard, the MPSF preseason polls out for men's volleyball. Mm-hmm. Where is Sean Olmstead's team ranked? And is it fair? I got an issue with it. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube, and TikTok. I'm just ignoring the X. I don't care. Send in your tweets on Twitter X. On Twitter X. Twitter <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Spencer. He is Jerem. What a fun time with Jimmer for dinner oh, yeah. today. Always fun. Great conversation. Here. Let's roll out today's headlines as well. Number 18, men's hoops beat Denver 90-74. Career high 28 points from Jackson Robinson. Eight threes. Are you kidding me? Noah Waterman, 20 points, 14 rebounds. His first double-double of his career. Spencer Johnson, second straight double-double of his career. BYU 9-1, best 10-game start since Jimmer's senior year. BYU hosts Georgia State Saturday. Pre-game 8 Eastern on BYU TV, BYU Radio. Cougs up to number seven in Ken Palmer. Let's go. Yesterday, a federal judge ruled in favor of a temporary restraining order, yikes, against the NCAA's transfer rule, meaning the NCAA can't enforce its transfer waiver rules for at least 13 more days, which means BYU's Marcus Adams Jr., who was at Kansas and Gonzaga this offseason, now at BYU, who had applied to play this season after two transfers, is now potentially eligible. So we could see him play for the next 14 days, beginning at... In the game against Georgia State? We'll see, man. Offensive tackle Kingsley Suamatiia and tight end Isaac Rex both declared for the NFL draft yesterday. Rex played four seasons at BYU, broke the record for most tight ends by a touchdown. Suamatiia has played 22 games the last two years. Also, running back Miles Davis returns to BYU out of the portal after a brief stint in there. He's rushed for 392 yards and two touchdowns in his BYU career. It's game night for Michael Davis and the Los Angeles Chargers of San Diego who take on... The Las Vegas, Oakland, L.A. Raiders. <laughs> it's crazy. Thursday night football, longtime rivals. Davis seventh on the Chargers in tackles this season with 46 as eight pass breakups and picked up his first interception of the season last week. It was more like a steal. It was awesome. Like, like, it, was it, was great, awesome. it was a great play. And the MPSF men's volleyball preseason coaches poll is out. BYU tied for third with Grand Canyon behind UCLA, who won the national championship, and Stanford. Season Ooh. begins January 5th against Ball State. All home matches will be on BYU TV. It's the only sport we've got on BYU TV for the games now. Because they're not in the Big 12. Those are today's headlines. Now some opinions in the whip. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Your uniform tracker is creating a new jersey after each Cougar win in men's basketball. And last night's was a BYU Creamery jersey. <laughs> How much would you pay for this? Because for me, it's a lot of dough. This is awesome. <laughs> I love this. I'd probably, I'd, I'd probably drop 125 for that. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I love it, dude. I think it's super cool. <laughs> it's very, very creative. That. It's very creative. It's so good. Yeah, the light blue with the uh, ice cream basketball and that cone. iconic logo. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Like, that's, that's pretty sweet. Very, very fun. So go ahead and make it somebody. Let's make it happen, actually, will you? As mentioned in headlines, Jeremy, BYU men's volleyball number three in the MPSF preseason poll. Is that a fair ranking? I could have seen BYU at two. They finished second last year, and they lost two starters. They returned the other five. Sanford returns a lot of starters, too, and got BYU in the MPSF semis. But BYU had won nine in a row going into that game. Um, I would I would have preferred BYU at number two here, but I think this team is good as the no one believes in them. Give them the extra motivation. Sean told us in Studio B, I would prefer to be lower than higher. Hey, they were picked seventh, you know, by who? What? <laughs> Up next, what is your favorite Jimmer Fredette memory? We'll look at more of your responses after the break as Jimmer Day continues on Blue Pants Thursday. This is BYU Sports Text Nation. me next time. <laughs> I got to buy some, though. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Our throwback Thursday question of the day is, a great one. I would what is your for blue pants during the break. <laughs> what is your favorite Jimmer for that memory at BYU? At Ryben3 on X answers, an underrated one is his first deep three that I remember taking off nationwide 
against TCU. Yes. But yes. that one stands out. There it is. It truly was from where no man yes. has gone before. Jim Arrange. Yes. <laughs> TCU's head Enterprise. coach is like, what the heck do I do? Yeah. Just throws his hands up. What's like, his name again? D- Jim. Uh, Miles. Jim? I can't remember. Jim something? Jim Miles? Ah. No. T- ah. Although any coach named Jim is probably a good guess. Okay. <laughs> Steven something? <laughs> Our elite voice remember. of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes from Tasha Lynn 99X. Huge BYU basketball Huge fan. Huge Jimmer fan. BYU fan. How can it not be San Diego State? I got in line five hours before tip-off and was still close to the top, the arena. Yeah. I've never heard the Marriott Center be louder or crazier since. That's the greatest sporting event I've ever been to. That's crazy. Tim Miles is the name, by the way. Tim Miles yeah. was Colorado State, right? Oh, I'm, no, you're right. I'm thinking of the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah. No, Colorado Jim State. Jim something it at was, TCU? I don't remember at okay. all. You tell me. Jim <laughs> Smith. Today's Rise of Shadow presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Jackson Robinson, eight threes. That was amazing. Yeah, Have we just Rosen seen the record. tip of the iceberg for him? I doubt it's the peak. Freeze off the bench. Go. Yeah. Cool. Our special thanks to today's guest, Jimmer for debt. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, the number two, number 32. The, the second best number 32? For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Jacob Hartsock. We'll see you tomorrow nice. for another live edition of BYU Sports Station. Jimmer Mania is back.